Well, the stage is set for a Democratic showdown in the U.S. city of Detroit Tuesday night. Democratic Party presidential candidates will try to distance themselves from their rivals as they jump for position in two debates this week. Progressive standard bearers Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren will share the stage on Tuesday night. Then frontrunner Joe Biden will fend off attacks on Wednesday. As Michael Sullivan reports, 10 of the 20 candidates square off on each of the two nights. With a clear but shrinking lead in the polls, former Vice President Biden, with other candidates, paid visits last week to African-American civil rights groups. Still dominating the news were comments by U.S. President Donald Trump aimed at four minority members of Congress, which Democrats widely criticized as racist. Race became an issue in the Democratic contest when California Senator Kamala Harris questioned Biden's record in debates in Miami in June. They aired on NBC News. One analyst tells VOA to expect more fireworks. This may be the final chance for a lot of those 20 candidates to make their mark and the way to do that is by mixing it up with the front runners, being aggressive and really attacking them. Biden has also come under attack for supporting a tough 1994 crime bill which Harris says contributed to the mass incarceration of minorities. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker has echoed the charge and trailing in the polls may revisit the question. Another analyst says voters want to hear about economic issues. I think they need to focus on issues like health care or uh, on uh, education policy or on uh, job creation. He is doing Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who ranks second in most polls, is struggling to keep his lead over fellow progressive rival Elizabeth Warren, a senator from Massachusetts. We need a presidential campaign which energizes and excites the American people. The debate offers a chance for the candidates to speak directly to voters, as they will in coming months, in smaller events around the country. Mike O'Sullivan, VOA News, Los Angeles. And for more on what to expect from that debate stage, let's go live now to Detroit, Michigan, where our reporter Philip Crowther is standing by. Good evening, Philip. How are you? Hi, good evening. Very well. How are you? I'm um, good. Thank you. Philip, this is an age-old tradition in American politics. What, what do these debates really accomplish? And will this evening's face-off do more for the voters or for the candidates? Well, we're still so early in the process that for so many of these Democratic candidates, it's largely about introducing themselves still to the electorate. Remember that we're very early in this election campaign. There are going to be 12 debates altogether. We've reached only the second stage, and there are so many candidates that this debate, for example, here in Detroit, had to be divided into two. There are going to be 10 candidates on stage this Tuesday evening, another 10 on stage this Wednesday evening. So what can candidates do to really have an impact on voters? Well, first of all, they can try and create a viral moment, something that will be repeated on air on all US TV networks and channels for a long time. They can also attack each other, as was the case last month in Miami during the first debate when Senator Kamala Harris had that pretty aggressive attack on former Vice President Joe Biden. And the other thing, of course, that these candidates all will have to say, is that will have to do, as I mentioned, is they will simply have to introduce themselves to the American people. With 20 candidates on stage throughout these two days, there are many who American voters will never have heard of and let alone will have decided might be their right choice for the presidency in 2020. Well, Philip, you spoke about viral moments. And of course, we've seen a real clash here in recent days and weeks after President Donald Trump targeted four Democratic congresswomen of color and then also Democratic Congressman Elijah Cummings. All those attacks seen as racially motivated. Looking at the lineup tonight, there doesn't seem to be a lot of diversity on the stage. Is race something that these candidates are likely to avoid or to address? No, they're going to address it. There is absolutely no way uh, that these 10 candidates this Tuesday night and the next 10 candidates on Wednesday night will be able to avoid the very thorny subject of racism. They will all be criticizing the president for what they will see clearly as racist remarks from him and racist tweets over the last few weeks. The only question is which one of these candidates is 
going to be the most aggressive uh, toward the president. But you are absolutely right in talking about the lack of diversity on stage. This is generally a diverse field of Democratic candidates. But on this Tuesday night, it's basically a white field of candidates that we'll see here in Detroit at the Fox Theatre in the downtown area of the city. On Wednesday, it's going to be a little bit different. For example, we'll have on stage Julian Castro. He wants to be the first Hispanic president of the United States. Not doing too well in the polls, but still, it would be a first, of course. Then there's Senator Kamala Harris of California. She would not be, of course, the first female president of the United States. She would be the first female African-American president of the United States. So there's quite a bit of diversity in this field after all. Uh, Philip, a wide field and a wide range of issues. Very briefly, what are the other issues that are likely to drive the questions tonight? Well, there's going to be health care, for example, how much uh, federal involvement these candidates might want to see in health care in the United States. We will be hearing a little bit about foreign policy, one would presume. Uh, will these candidates want to re-enter the nuclear deal with Iran, for example? Will they want to re-enter the climate deal with Paris, uh, signed in Paris? These are some of the elements that we're looking out for here at this second, uh, second series of democratic, presidential, uh, democratic debates here in Detroit. Well, Philip Crowther there reporting for us live from Detroit, Michigan. Philip, thank you.